Hello, hello out there, everyone. Uh, my name is CV, and welcome to my channel, The Reconverted Catholic. Uh, also, welcome to another video in my recommended reading series, um, which uh, features um, uh, Catholic slash Christian slash theology related books uh, to help you grow in your uh, faith journey, uh, either A, as a fellow Catholic Christian or someone who is exploring the Catholic Christian faith. Uh, the books I've recommended on this channel, you know, uh, so far, and including this one today, are all meant to be a resource for your faith journey, and hopefully uh, uh, answer a lot of maybe questions or doubts you have, um, as well as removing some of the uh, sort of lack of a better way of saying it, kind of smoke and mirrors that sometimes seems to be kind of pr projected out there about you know scripture and uh, understanding it and discerning it, and as I have in. Uh, one of my other video series, Understanding the Bible, you know, we learned that, um, you know, while the Bible does have many layers, uh, scripture does have layers and can seem sort of outwardly complex, um, it's actually, uh, well, at the end of the day, n not as uh, difficult to uh, understand and apply to our, our lives. Um, and that's, uh, that's the beauty of scripture, one of the many beauties of scripture, um, that actually it, very much applies to all of us and how we can grow as humans and also our relationship with God. Now that said, let's talk about the uh, book I'm recommending um, here today. And that is about um, the book of uh, Revelation, <laughs> which I know makes uh, just the word itself or uh, referring to the book of Revelation, you know, it makes a lot of people sort of shake in their shoes and, <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, doesn't help that we have so much out. Well, we have uh, books and movies and so forth out there. And I'll get to that in a little bit that either, uh, distort, um, <laughs> Revelation, the book of Revelation, or just show a lot of, you know, doom and destruction and, judgment and uh people running in terror and panic and <laughs> so forth and so um in this video i'm going to clear up some of that confusion and uh what the book of revelation actually represents um i certainly even uh, by the end of this video and as i continue in my faith journey i don't claim to be uh uh you know an expert per se or the final authority again on this, but I can say that this book I'm recommending today, highly, highly recommend it. And I think again, it'll help you clear up a lot of uh, maybe misinformation about Revelation and uh, give you maybe hopefully a whole new and fresh perspective on it. So let's go ahead and jump into the review. And the book is uh, called Coming Soon by uh, Michael Barber. So when I was 16, uh, in the days of <laughs> VCRs, VHS tapes, movie rental story, uh, stores, and sleepovers at my uh, friends' houses, um, so yes, I am kind of dating myself here, <laughs> one of my friends and I decided to rent a couple of movies one Friday night, and because we were both fairly good Catholic boys, uh, who, to our friend's surprise, uh, enjoyed going to catechism, <laughs> also known then as uh, CCD, uh, after Sunday evening mass, um, uh, well, after Sunday mass, we would attend catechism. Anyhow, we uh, rented what appeared to be a, uh, a Catholic Christian related movie called The Seventh Sign, uh, released the year before, uh, as in 1988. So yes, quite a while back. <laughs> and featuring uh, Demi Moore and Michael Bean. Being that most teenage boys then had a thing for Demi Moore and... Uh, and, and while well, Michael Bean gave a uh, rock star performance as Kyle Reese in the first Terminator movie, I mean, how could it possibly be, or is, how is, that is, how is the seventh sign, how could it possibly be a bad movie? And it turned out not uh, to be such a bad movie. Uh, it was a bit on the scary side, uh, yet as the title suggested, the movie was an interpretation of Revelation. Uh, that's right, the very last book in the Bible and quite possibly one of the most misinterpreted uh, books in existence, and I alluded to that earlier. <laughs> uh, oh, well, even the interpretation applied to The Seventh Sign was a bit off the mark, uh, particularly because of its more literal focus on scripture. Uh, nevertheless, it was a powerful story uh, with an equally powerful reminder about the meaning of sacrifice, 
uh, that Christ's sacrifice is a timeless model of replacing our often self-serving view of life with the real meaning of love, uh, that being God's love. As a quick sidebar, uh, I thought and still think that Jürgen uh, Prochnow, hope I have that pronunciation right, uh, the actor who played the second coming of Jesus as a human form in the movie The Seventh Sign, is almost exactly how I imagine Jesus would look and act today if he were walking among us again. So if that uh, piques your curiosity, I, well, I recommend the movie as well. Uh, also, as expected, uh, Demi Moore and Michael Bean gave solid performances, though Bean's character was somewhat more in the background than his you know, breakout role as uh, Kyle Reese in the Terminator movie. Still, Bean knows how to play an intriguing character and with meaningful depth. The Seventh Sign was also a reminder of <laughs> how awful just about every Revelation-type movie has been since then. Uh, yes, I'm... Um, include the left behind movies in that bunch, or for that matter, any Bible based movie that pushes a purely literal agenda uh, or is filled with misguided propaganda. Movies that distort scripture not only do a disservice to it, but they also do a damaging disservice to Christian theology overall. Uh, worse, these kinds of misinterpretations have spawned um, competing factions largely throughout uh, Protestant denominations, unfortunately, about what revelation really means. Uh, we now have pre-tribulation believers, uh, or they're called pre-tribbers, uh, post-tribulation, rapture versus no rapture, the Antichrist as being as a being versus the Antichrist as an institution, um, pandemic vaccines viewed as the mark of the beast, and the fun keeps going from there. Thankfully, there is a book that verse by verse does a complete, wonderfully thorough walkthrough of Revelation. And if you're asking who's brave enough to tackle that subject, uh, well, his name is Michael Barber, a fellow Catholic, a fellow fan of uh, Scott Hahn's works, and a super impressive theologian. Prior to reading uh, Barber's book on Revelation, uh, again called Coming Soon, I thought I had a rather uh, comfortable understanding of Revelation. Uh, that is, it is an excellent example of using the four senses to interpret scripture. Uh, namely, when we connect the literal, allegorical, moral, and anagogical dots, uh, scripture doesn't have to be so overwhelming. Uh, however, <laughs> now having read coming soon, uh, it turns out that there is a mountain of information in Revelation that I apparently did not know. Uh, most of my missing information can be broken down into two components. Uh, first, how the book of Revelation itself is structured. And second, that the more we connect with sacred scripture and sacred tradition, uh, the more we can understand Revelation. And this reminds me, um, have you seen the memes out there that begin with, uh, how old were you when you found out, fill in the blank? Uh, for instance, I recently saw a meme containing a, a Coke can in this question. How old were you when you found out that the hole in the tab on a Coke can is for drinking with a straw? <laughs> and many people commented to that meme with this answer. Uh, I was today, quote, today years old. <laughs> and that included me. <laughs> um, and I was also today years old when I learned that the entire book of Revelation basically mirrors much of the uh, mass and what it represents. Uh, early on in Coming Soon, Barber uh, first explains Revelation as being split into three parts, and which he draws from Scott Hahn's well-acclaimed book, uh, The Lamb's Supper. Part one, the seven letters, respectively to the seven established churches in the first century, uh, that explain the importance of penance. Uh, part two, a book with seven seals is opened and which reveals seven judgments. And part three, seven chalices, and a direct quote from the book, seven chalices are poured out, climaxing the marriage supper of the Lamb, where the church is united to Christ. And I mean a direct quote from coming soon and explaining Revelation. Now, Barber compares this, uh, those three parts, to... Um, the mass again. Those th first three parts again being uh, about penance, and then a book uh, uh, being opened and its contents being revealed, 
and uh, seven chalices poured out. And again, uh, from the book Climax in the Marriage, Supper of the Lamb, where the church is united to Christ. So why is that important? Uh, Zen uh, Barber uh, compares us to the Mass itself. Um, part one being we call for our sins to be forgiven, uh, to live in a state of penance and grace. Uh, part two, we listen to sacred scripture, uh, how it spiritually and mor morally guides our relationship with Christ. And part three, uh, we partake in the Eucharist, the real presence of Christ, uh, which is central to the entire Mass and to our belief in Christ, as well as to the sacred tradition that the Catholic Church has honored for now 2,000 years. So yes, Revelation is the all-encompassing climactic Mass. It reminds us of Christ's sacrifice and resurrection for our eternal salvation and communion with God, and it shows why the sacraments are so necessary to our walk with Christ. Now, for those who may be asking, uh, what about all the talk about the end of the world, God giving us final judgments, and that Satan will be destroyed once and for all? Uh, all those components still have their place in understanding Revelation. Uh, however, and as Barber points out, and because sacred scripture contains layers, uh, also known as the four senses of scripture, uh, Revelation has a twofold message. Uh, one warns the first century contemporaries of John, uh, the author of Revelation, that the temple would be destroyed, which then did happen in 70 AD. Uh, the second is how we apply the first set of prophecies about the temple's destruction with prophecy about Christ's return. Barbara then spends most of uh, the book explaining what both sets of prophecies mean, including a section in each chapter called How Does This Apply to Today? And this makes reading Revelation much more enriching, much more relatable to our everyday lives. Uh, therefore, Revelation is certainly not just a book filled with complex symbolism or what sounds like a drug-induced dream. <laughs> uh, instead, it is the supreme mirror to the liturgy of the Mass. Now, this is where I could write a multi-part video series on all topics discussed and coming soon, and the book of Revelation in general. Uh, thankfully, though, as and as with other books I have recommended on this channel, uh, someone else has done quite a bit of the heavy lifting and discerning scripture um, and according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church. That said, I leave you with this. Uh, read the book. It turns out that Revelation isn't as scary and overwhelming as it f is frequently depicted. Uh, Revelation applies to every part of our faith journey. And at the center of that is Christ. Just as Christ is the center of Revelation and hence why Revelation is the Mass. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. Hope you learned a little bit about Revelation and its some of its core purpose. Uh, feel free to leave comments about this uh, here at um, the channel or in this video, or also feel free to email me at trcatholic at gmail.com. Again, trcatholic at uh, gmail.com. I will also, also, I will have a link to the, um, uh, to coming soon. Um, in the uh, uh, in the links below uh, here in this video. I uh, hope you all have a great rest of the week and see you at the next video. Thanks.